Greetings, Dave Berger here from Sharon Lutheran Church. Grace and peace to you from God the Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Broken record here. We started these Community Connections videos back in March, and as you're well aware, it is July. By my count, today's installment is my 16th video. We have already recorded and shared well over 30 worship services with all of you. As you might remember from last week, I've thought a lot over the past couple of months about mindset. Do we feel stuck or are we moving? Are we afraid of change or are we learning and growing? I would continue to contend that God is not done with us yet, both individually and as a community of faith. One of my favorite things to say is, if I am the same as I was 10 years ago, what did I do with 10 years? We should seek to learn and grow and change. To that end, I am excited to share that Deacon Jamie is convening online conversations about congregational life at Sharon. One of those happened last night, and the second will take place this coming Monday, July 13th at noon. We will be listening to and sharing with one another about the life of the church in these days we are in and what it may look like in the future. Please email Deacon Jamie to join the conversation. His address is jtravers, J-T-R-A-V-E-R-S, at SharonLutheran.org. When you replace why is this happening to me or us with what is this trying to teach me or us, everything shifts. The following examples might help us understand how we can move from fear to learning to growth. As I pointed out last week, the fear zone sounds like this. I avoid hard questions. I strive to be comfortable. I talk to others who look and think like me. The learning zone sounds like this. I seek out questions that make me uncomfortable. I am vulnerable about my own biases and knowledge gaps. I listen to others who look and think differently than me. The growth zone sounds like this. I sit with my discomfort. I don't let mistakes deter me from being better. I surround myself with people who look and think differently than me. What zone do you think you're in right now? Maybe you're between two zones. Maybe it feels like you're headed in the right direction or not. Maybe it depends on the day or the hour or the current topic or challenge. Here's a key question. Are we willing to say, I used to think this way, but I learned something. I experienced something. I listened to someone else's story and I can no longer think the same way. If we want to develop this growth mindset, there are several key areas to examine. Last week, we talked about viewing failure in a different light. We'll unpack some other key areas over the next several weeks. Today, I want to talk about curiosity and vocation. An odd mix, maybe, but I think we can do this. Our vocation, in one sense, is the Christian answer to the question, what shall I do with my life? Vocation has to do with the shape and meaning of our human existence. So long as we are alive and functioning, we have multiple callings, such as grandparent, citizen, member of a particular community of faith, along with whatever job or career we may be a part of at the time. Dorothy Bass, author of the book Leading Lives That Matter, helps us to remember 
that vocational discernment isn't just for young people. She also contends that it is very Lutheran to think that we are stationed in multiple areas of responsibility at the same time, that we are not ever just one thing. We are a church that believes that God is calling us into the world together. We respond to God's call as we use our gifts, and we can respond more effectively if we become acutely aware of our many gifts and talents, all given to us by a God who calls us and claims us, forgives us, and sends us. And here's the key. We need to comprehend not only our strengths, but our weaknesses. We can ask others for feedback, perhaps our closest friends, family members, neighbors, colleagues, as they can offer different views. Give us an overall perspective on what to focus on and areas for development, and they can clue us into our blind spots. After all, sometimes we don't even know what we don't know. We should lean into those areas where we have the most to discover. And that may just be what vocation has to do with curiosity. At the blessing of the backpacks at Sharon, we often tell our students that their job right now as a kindergartner or as a middle schooler or as someone in high school or college, their job is to be a learner that their vocation is to grow and learn and change and become who God is creating them to be. Without saying it, though, I think we might be saying once you get to be an adult, you trade that learning job for a career. You trade one for the other. It is my wish that all of us would be on that same learning journey as one of our lifelong vocations. I contend that all of us should act like a child does on a daily basis. Hear me out now. Living in wonderment and discovering the beauty of life. Will you decide today, if you haven't already, to continually focus on learning and growing? And then, how might we start? Begin by asking more questions and being genuinely more curious about everyone you meet, about the journey they have been on, and about what they can teach you and me. Angelina Zimmerman says, For every person I have met, every experience I have had, teaches me about the world, myself, and others. It is one of the many delights within this world, for the unquenchable thirst for knowledge helps me to move forward with undeniable gusto, unbounding love, and the deepest sense of appreciation for those who have touched my heart. We can certainly be curious in many different ways. Here are a few things to think about. How prepared are you to go out on a limb and risk a better way of doing things? How likely are you to be fully present for the current conversation or the task at hand? How comfortable are you when you don't have all the answers? How often do you notice things beyond the obvious? Are you willing to point them out? How prepared are you to ask the hard questions? How likely are you to use a playful approach when learning? Perhaps you are strong in some of these curiosity areas and have others you could work on. I know that I certainly do. Dear friends, in these uncertain and trying times, please remember this. We all have a role to play as we become more curious and live out our vocation for the sake of God's work in the world. We need weavers, builders, healers, guides, storytellers, and caregivers just as much as we need experimenters, frontline responders, visionaries, and disruptors. 
and we all need to refuel and recharge from time to time. Trust and know that God is still speaking and still working for justice and peace through all of us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that work doesn't only rely on you or me. Rest is not the enemy of change. It is one part of its fuel. Be well, friends. Peace.